Welcome to the Com Pod, a deep dive into the people that make up the School of Communication at Chapman University in Orange, California. Welcome, everyone, to the Com Pod, the podcast where we take a deep dive into the School of Communication at Chapman University in Orange, California, and learn about the people within it. I am your host, DJ Jimmy C., the exoneree, and today's guest from the School of Communication is none other than Dr. Megan Vendemia. Vendemia, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you're good. Dr. Megan Vendemia, and she's here at Chapman University. So, Dr. Uh, Vendemia, how are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you doing, Jimmy? I am doing awesome. Thank you. So, so I, I just want to just uh, jump right into it and let you know that uh, we are so delighted to have you here today. And uh, this has been a, a, a very frantic morning for me. I don't know about you all. You know, I'm just getting in here, uh, LAX, uh, just getting over here. So it is a wonderful opportunity for me to be here with you all. And we have uh, our wonderful guest, Dr. V as uh, she is so affectionately affectionately known here at Chapman University. So thank you, Dr. V, for blessing us with your presence. No problem. So uh, so earlier this semester, um, we gave the audience a teaser of you and uh, what was to come. Uh, how, how do you think we can match or top that earlier interview from the Calm podcast? Ooh, that's a great question. I was thinking about ways that we could do that. And I think one of the big differences is we are not masked doing this. When we came in the last time, we were masked up. We were trying to figure out all of the things within this environment. It was new for both of us coming in here. Um, And after seeing a bunch of other faculty interviews, I think we're in our groove here. So I'm excited to see um, how... I know it will be much improved. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. And I, I want to honestly admit, I, I kind of forgot to put the mask on. I have my mask here. My wife is always telling me, put your mask on at all times. Forget about what you heard, wear your mask. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're here maskless and uh, all vaccinated, and by the grace of God, we're, we're all healthy. Uh, so so what, tell me something, Dr. V. What is exciting and new here at Chapman's, Chapman University School of Communication that... Uh, that you're a part of? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, So I'm relatively new as one of those new things here. Um, This is my third year here. Um, So, but most of that time was spent online. So there's a lot of things about being on campus now in person, getting to have um, a lot of things for the first time. Um, So things that I'm excited and involved with, um, I think, I know that a lot of people in our department are very much involved with the first gen program Mm -hmm. um, that has been launched within the School of Communication, our own program, um, which is really, really exciting. Um, And then within my own things that I have going on, um, I have an undergraduate research lab, which we are now, we were doing it on Zoom, but it's not the same. Being able to meet in person, which I'm meeting with my group later this afternoon, um, the Embody Research Lab. So that's exciting. and Big shout out. Yes. (laughs) Congratulations. Congratulations to to you on that. Uh, I omitted saying that uh, we we have a a special guest in here, uh, someone who's very uh, dear to all of us here at Chapman Chapman University. It is none other than your favorite DJ, DJ Curly. How you doing, DJ Curly? There we go. There we go. I got my own sound effects here, too. This is a new addition to the the radio station. So I might be including a few from my... My uh, hot button keys that I've got over here called a stream deck. But I love it. I love it. I love it. Excellent to be here again on another riveting episode of the Compod. And and I tell you, you know, we, we have these interviews with with wonderful deans and and professors and doctors here in the, in the School of Communication, but it doesn't go off without DJ Curly. <laughs> and I just want to give you look. My man, DJ Curly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's all about Dr. V- Vendemia today. But uh, we have we have none other than DJ Curly sitting in with us. And, and it's always an honor to have you here with us. DJ Great Curly. to be here. No doubt. So so, so, so tell me, uh, Dr. Vendemia, how have you, among many professors, attributed to the progressive 
and ever-changing positive climate here at Chapman University School of Communication? That's a great question. I think um, a lot of it has to do with um, engaging with our students. Um, our students have great ideas and are excited to contribute in many ways, whether it be through research um, that um, in my own research has been um, trying to um, challenge a lot of work in the body image domain. Um, so students being involved in that process and excited about that work has certainly been one of those areas. Oh, no doubt. That, that is a, a great area to uh, kind of focus on also, and especially in today's time. And I know you're doing a wonderful job with that. So, so we're just going to give you another shout out to, 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 to that body image and doing what you do over there. You know, giving, giving people, you know, encouragement and uplifting and, and, and just bringing a new, a new look to it. So, hey, so, so tell me something. We are, we are so thankful that you're committed to enhancing the lives of the young students here at Chapman University. Do you have a lot of students that come back and, 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 and speak to you and say, I know, you know, we had class together yeah. and, and, and your teaching was phenomenal. But do you have students come back and, and, and want to just engage with you and, and just tell you how great of a teacher you were and things of that sort? Yes, that's, um, I'm flattered when that happens. Um, it's really exciting seeing where people land jobs. Um, most recently, because this is about that time of year, um, I've had a lot of people coming back saying that they're going to grad school, um, which excites me if they've been involved with research um, and continuing to push forward in their education, which has been really, really exciting. And I think like this time of year has been an exciting one to hear those sorts of announcements from students. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> And we're going to give a special shout out to Kyrie Carter. Kyrie Carter was one of your students, and he's now a grad in the graduate uh, communication school of graduation, a graduate degree. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Kyrie Carter and uh, can keep doing your thing, man. So, so we want to ask you the next question. I want to say, what new opportunities have you created or been a part of that is moving Chapman University Department Communication Department to a higher standing regarding communication and student achievement? I would say from my standpoint, um, I hope that it's through the research we're doing um, that definitely contributes to um, the university, um, but also is contributing to knowledge in general, which goes beyond Chapman, but is representing Chapman um, on a national and international scale, presenting work at conferences that, um, especially within communication, the discipline, um, but also seeing that in the popular press is exciting too, to see um, how not only it's Chapman, but it's people that represent that work, um, especially our students. Exactly. And, and that's, that's just wonderful. Now, now you're, you're a native of Ohio. Yes. And uh, al along with other schools, I think you, you're also an Ohio State University graduate. I am. Am I correct? A two-time Ohio State yes. University grad. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and give a shout out to the Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> So can you tell us, how does it really feel being here in sunny California in March? And, and do you miss the snow and diehard fans from the Buckeyes? You know, in comparison, like what about the Panthers brings about a smile on your face and warms your heart? Ooh, that's a loaded question. I think for what um, we have in weather here, mm -hmm. um, the fandom in Ohio, there's nothing like being <laughs> in a crowded stadium when it's raining, sleeting. Um, you're freezing your fingers off. Um, that I, I'm very fortunate, though, this time of year that we can enjoy walking across campus without a jacket on. I really appreciate that. But um, yes. Ohio definitely has the unexpectedness in weather. Um, you have to check every day. Potentially, you get four seasons in one day, which always keeps you on your toes. Okay, and so, so do we have a name for the uh, football field here? I know Ohio State is the horseshoe, I believe, right? I think it's the horseshoe. Yeah, it is. It is. So, so what? What's what's the stadium here? What is the stadium here called? It's called Wilson Field. Wilson Field. So you'd rather be at Wilson Field than uh, the horseshoe. Am I am I correct? Uh, oh, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna put you in a, a little little binder there. <laughs> but we we love having you here at Chapman University, and and you've been just wonderful, and things have been you know just increasingly advantageous for all of us that have been a part of your classes and being able to interact with you outside the classes. Thank you for coming by this Chapman Radio and, and, and doing this interview, as always. Thank you. And, uh, and I just want to say this personally. You know, you're a wonderful professor. And as I spoke about earlier, 
you know, uh, we had we had a class together. I, mm-hmm. You taught me. What, what was what was the name of that class? It was research methods. Research which methods, is which everyone's is everyone's favorite class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a wonderful time, and I believe we were online. Yes, completely online that semester. That was uh, it was a great experience for me. I don't know about you. How, what do you think about the online? It was rough. Um, in some ways, because I like interacting with people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do feel like the classes that I did have were great in that students were ready to be involved. A lot of them had never been on campus. I think at the point where I had you, you had never been in an in-person class. No, so that... I think everyone was in the same position, being that class typically um, sophomores are taking or juniors. Um, so we were all kind of, I think, a little thirsty to at least have some normalcy in being in class. So... I think it went as well as it could, but I'm very excited to be back on campus. Now, personally, I, I, had, I haven't been a student at a university in a long time. Yeah. So it was a, it was a great experience to come to, the, to school, but I, I did have a, a wonderful time doing the Zoom. It kind of made me wear glasses now. You know, I mess with my vision. So I, I, I guess, what is it called, Blu-ray or something mm-hmm. like that? My wife said, you got to do Blu-ray. I said, well, it's too late. I've, I've lost my, <laughs> my eyesight a little bit, but hey, I enjoyed Zoom, enjoyed you as a teacher, professor, and, and, and you, just, you just did such wonderful things over the Zoom. I truly was engaged, and, and, I, and I learned so much, and I'm just, I'm just thankful that I had you as, an, as a professor. Well, thank you. So with that, I want to just be able to say that uh, we are going to be able to smooth out things and go off into currently you know, in, in the next episode. And we want to let you all know that we're here with Dr. Megan Bendemia. We will see you. Current breaking, trending, latest update today, live headline. Wait, what did you just say? Okay. Of course, uh, the purpose of this podcast is to introduce Chapman Communication Studies professors, lecturers, and staff to our audience, which consists of students, faculty, and all individuals interested. It is an honor to be a part of this meaningful podcast. So Dr. Vendemia, please share with our audience what your job entails and how you as a professor of Calm, have helped to excel Chapman University as a leader in the School of Communication. Um, So I teach typically the undergraduate research methods class. Um, I'm teaching it next semester. I'm also teaching grad research methods, advanced research methods um, next semester. Um, But this semester I've been mostly working on research. Um, So I have been every day waking up, getting right to my laptop, and churning out papers where I'm working um, with a lot of students both graduate students and undergraduate students, um, progressing their own research ideas, and in some cases, they're assisting with my research. So that's been this semester has been a lot of reading, writing, and meetings every day. Well, how about this? (laughs) (laughs) That makes me feel better. (laughs) You You are doing a wonderful job. I mean, we can't give you enough applause. Please continue just, just doing what you do. I know you love what you're doing. It's, it's so wonderful when you love what you do. You know, you, 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 it's not going to work. It's not putting you in any, any type of hardship or, mm-hmm. or stress. This is where we de-stress it. Yeah. Absolutely. At the School of Communication. You guys out there remember that. Or you individuals out there remember that. Thank you. So Dr. Vindemir, please share with our audience how this opportunity to work at Chapman University has benefited yourself and our students here at Chapman. Yeah, so I didn't know a whole lot about Chapman before coming here. Um, And even in my interview process, what really stood out to me is that students care about being here and want to be involved, um, which isn't, I don't think, the case everywhere. Um, So I feel that um, I was excited about that coming here in terms of being involved with students, but also seeing like kind of... um, their interest in working with faculty and seeing faculty as a resource and being able to work with them, whatever it might be, whether it be internships, research, um, or just even professional um, guidance into their careers, I think um, has been a really exciting part of the process. And that's wonderful. 
I just want to man. I just I, this is this is just such a wonderful opportunity. People out there in the university are able to hear Dr. V, uh, Dr. Vendemia, uh, be able to, to to express herself and share with you all, share with all of us how wonderful things here at Chapman are for her. And, and of course, there are some hard times, and we'll we'll delve in a little bit of that uh, in, a, in in a, in a few seconds. But thus far, you know, it's been a wonderful ride. And how many years have you been here? This is my in my third year. Okay. Yeah, wrapping up year three. Year three. That's, I mean, that deserves, how about this? That's, that's three years of dedication, three years of commitment, three years of higher learning with excellence with Dr. V. Yes. So Chapman University is, is leading by example regarding diversity and inclusion in staff and students. What are ways you can further improve on in, in support of diversity and inclusion in today's culture, specifically here at Chapman University. Now, as a, as a calm major myself, I've noticed, now in some classes I've been the only African American. Mm -hmm. and, and there's been classes where there have been maybe a couple African Americans and, and maybe one Latina or mm -hmm. Latino. But, you know, Chapman has, has been in a position to start improving. I know we've hired a few new teachers of, of color and mm -hmm. things of that sort. So can you share with the audience uh, how that has been in regard to less moving forward, moving the needle a little bit as far as moving and pr providing opportunities for those that are been, have been marginalized to a yeah. degree and are less fortunate? Yes, that's, that's a great and it's an important question. Um, and I think we are making progress, but as you say, it's moving the needle a little bit. Um, but I think something to keep in mind with that as we move forward, um, some of those are more you know, high level processes that are probably outside of my control, mm -hmm. but I think something that's within our control is retention of students um, and making sure that we create as professors an inclusive environment for our students um, to feel supported, um, whether it be um, being a first generation student who might not know about opportunities beyond post-graduation or what that looks like or um, resources that are available within a university structure um, and making sure that we can provide those things um, to students while they are here, um, once they are here. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And, and, we, and we definitely want to make sure students graduate. Yes. What, what's the graduation rate here? That is a question I can definitely not answer. Oh, I'll put you on the spot. How about that? <laughs> How about an applause I, for I that I think it's one? pretty good. I would say <laughs> good is the answer. Yes. It's yeah, I, I, I believe we have a, a wonderful graduation rate here. I'm, I'm not sure if it's 100%, but maybe 99.8 or something to that degree. It's, it's, it's pretty very, good. It's very, very that's high. It's very high. And that's thanks to you and so many other wonderful professors and, 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 and instructor, instructors and deans here at the university. You just, you just make life uh, so much easier. So I want to be able to go off into our next segment, which is Hot Seat and Rapid Fire. And we're going to do that with Dr. V. And I'll let you guys know how we're going to make our, our, our next segment be so interesting. Is it getting hot in here? Yeah, it definitely is. But I didn't touch the heat, did you? No, but now that I look at our guest, it looks like their seat's on fire. It definitely is. Is it time for the hot seat? Hold on. Goddamn heart rate's about 130. We're here for the hot seat rapid fire. And this is going to be, this is a segment which involves a series of random questions that I'll choose. So please answer the questions, Dr. V, as quickly and uh, just, you know, enjoyable as possible. My first question is, what is the last movie that you watched? I, just as you, just came back on a flight and I watched um, King Richard on the flight. Awesome. Okay, my next one. What is your favorite city and why? Um, it's kind of a tie between Amsterdam being one of my favorite cities, but I've always had a soft spot for London. It's where I studied abroad, but I also have liked traveling um, like in Asia, particularly in South Korea and Japan. So I I like to travel, so it's hard to boil that down to one awesome, particular. Awesome, awesome. So what about your favorite food? What is your favorite food? Italian food from my hometown, which is Youngstown, Ohio. Um, hey, the best Youngstown. Italian food, I would argue, in the U.S. Okay. So how do you imagine our world in the year of 2042? That's 2042. 
it's 20 years from now. Right. I would say hopefully in a better place. Hopefully some of the recent events that we've experienced as a country and as uh, globally, I would hope that we are in a better, less turbulent place than we are right now. Most definitely. Prayers for that one. Please share with us something that no one knows about you. I have traveled to 47 out of 50 states. I think that's one of... I'm going to try to get... 48 and 49 here soon. Though. Well, that's good. We already know that. What, Give us what something are, else. What are they? What are it's the 48 and 49? Sorry to jump in. I'm curious. <laughs> what are the 48 and 49? North Dakota, Hawaii, and Alaska. I feel like based on location, Hawaii could happen sooner. And I have a friend who lives in South Dakota that I think we're going to road trip to North Dakota. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What is your favorite color and why? Green. Um, because of the Chapman Radio shirt. Just kidding. Hey. Um, I've, always liked, I've always liked the color green. How about this? <laughs> and this. <laughs> so last question, what is your favorite season I and like, why? Mm, fall. I'm, I'm thinking snow. I'm thinking snow. Uh, definitely not. <gasps> uh, I'm not a big fan of snow, even though I grew up with it my whole life. Um, I like fall, back to school season, back to kind of getting back into the mode of Usually the weather is really nice, um, and it's football season. I tell you, that is, uh, <sighs> man, that's that's awesome. Me personally, I like the snow. I like the fall. I, mm -hmm. I want to see those those leaves change, like you. Mm -hmm. I love seeing that. Being able to be in West Virginia, watching the mountains, those rolling mountains, mm -hmm. I love that. You, yeah. but you don't talk about the mountains in Ohio. Not a lot in Columbus. Oh yeah. It's pretty flat. Yeah, there pretty it is. Pretty flat. It uh, well, turns out that both of you guys are wrong. Being a native Southern California, the correct answer is summer and the beach. Hey, that's <laughs> another one. I think you, I, I agree with that also. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna delve into our next topic, and uh, we're gonna be able to go off into the story time. And the purpose of that segment is gonna be about telling a specific story about the brief history here at Chapman University. We'll do that. Now this is a story. Story. Here we are here at story time, and like I said, this seg this segment is uh, about telling a specific story in a about your brief time or your brief history here at Chapman University. What can you uh, let us know about? What drew you to, to Chapman University, Doctor V? A job offer, um, to be <laughs> as straightforward as possible. I had a job offer at Chapman um, as I was applying all over the country and some international jobs. And Chapman came up with an offer and it seemed like a place that I could continue to pursue um, the job that I wanted to have. And certainly um, it has exceeded expectations in terms of my experience with undergraduate and graduate students here. Um, they never could have expected accepting that offer that's awesome everything happens for a reason and, and and you were in the right place at the right time and that opportunity came and now it's just the the rest is history yes absolutely so what has been your most challenging moment thus far here at chapman university i think probably what i could say that other people would agree with was going through a global pandemic um very that's early fair. in my time here um that i had one semester of just moving cross country, getting used to being in a new place, getting set up here, and then shifting completely online for eh, like two years was a little bit rough for an intro. Well, you know, if it ain't rough, it ain't right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to appreciate every day that exactly. we get to do this. Exactly. So what has been your most rewarding moment thus far at Chapman? I think actually getting to see this is one of those things right here. This is really cool what we have going on here. Um, but other things that come to mind would be um, collaborations with, especially with one of my undergraduate students who is graduating, um, who got to publish a paper with me that came out um, available online yesterday. We're so looking for the name. We need a name. Steel Vivret. Yay! Congratulations, yeah. man. That is awesome. Who has been your greatest life influencer? Not Chapman related either. Okay. Um, I would say it's probably a trifecta of my parents have always been supportive of my education. Um, even when I was, you know, going to never graduate, it seemed it seemed like I was just keep keep going. Yes. PhD program, keep going. Um, we're always supportive of that. Never question that. 
Um, my teachers and mentors, I would say uh, I at St. Christine School where I went um, to grade school, I had multiple mm. very influential female teachers who um, really always sparked that joy for learning um, and that carried through. Um, and then my mentors in grad school were also uh, my advisor, Dr. David D'Andrea was always supportive once I was to that place of grad school. Plus having lots of powerful female friends who are all excelling professionally yes. continues to inspire me. Well, I'm here to say uh, without the females, we are nothing. <laughs> We're going nowhere fast. <laughs> but thank you for sharing that with us. And this has uh, been a very wonderful segment here of story time. I'm gonna go right off into Mind Melt with you all next. Are you ready to have your mind melted? Here we are in Mind Melt. This will be our last segment here in this wonderful opportunity with Dr. Vendemia. And this has been just a wonderful opportunity, Dr. Vendemia. We, we, we're thanking you. And it seems like we just began, but here we are at the last segment. And that segment is Mind Milk. This is where we pose an odd philosophical question and see where, where it takes you. And we have a list of questions that range from one through eight, and I'm going to give them to you in a, in, a, in, a, in a number of ways. So kind of be ready. So here we are. If you can tell us, if there was only one cause that you could support in our world, what would it be and why? I think mental health um, certainly is something that right now is um, has gotten a lot of attention, and I think it continues to need to be there in so many capacities um, because it ties into so many other elements of success and well-being, um, personal and then kind of externally to things um, that I think you'll probably ask me some questions about moving forward. Yeah, that's, 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 that's awesome, that's wonderful. Mental health is so very important. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it, I'm talking entire, in, throughout our entire world. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and thank you for sharing that. My next question would be, you could, if you could only wear a black shirt with white text on it for the rest of your life, what does that shirt say? I would say if it could, I don't know if this falls within the constraints because it can be, can be anywhere. I would say saying hello in multiple different languages would mm. be, it's inviting, welcoming. I like it. Starts a conversation. I love it. I love it. Queen of Steas. So what everyday action would be funnier if you sneezed every time you performed it? I would say... <laughs> <laughs> this is a tricky one, and I did have to think about this. Um, I think, actually, I just did it. Every time you use a verbal filler, if you sneezed after. Wow. Um, you know, I think it ties into the goals of public speaking, but if you had to say, ah, and then sneeze right after, right. I'm sure that would keep it interesting. Most definitely it would. If you were king or ruler, how would you bring about world peace? I would hope, hope. It's a big task, but I would hope through education um, because I think I really truly believe that knowing more about the world um, and knowing more about other people's circumstance um, can I don't, promote open-mindedness um, and promote compassion. Awesome. What would your one occupation in the world be if you had the choice and why? I think I'm doing it right hey, now. Great answer. I think I'm doing it right now. Look, um, look, great answer. <laughs> I'm not looking to change careers, so that's a good thing. Awesome. Everyone doesn't have the opportunity to, to do what they yes. really love, and, and we're very fortunate. And I say we because we're all educators here. Yeah. You know, and, and DJ Curley, he's, he's a phenomenal educator. You're a phenomenal educator. And I do my, I do my best to, to share with individuals, sharing my testimony and, and speaking to all. So let's, uh, let's, let's go back to where we were at with the mind milk. What is the one thing you wish you could do if only you had the talent? I think there are probably two, but the one that first comes okay. to mind would be uh, being able to be fluent in many, many languages. Um, I think that would make traveling easier to be able to feel comfortable um, in communicating um, with people wherever it might be. 
Um, I also would like to be able to speed read. Um, I think <laughs> being able to digest more information, more knowledge, um, speed read and also comprehension. <laughs> that know, would be awesome. I know a few of those speed readers. My wife is one of them. Oh my, my God. My fiance is also oh. one of them. It's kind of <laughs> impressive to watch, but I can't. I feel like they're cheating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, if you were if you were leader of the free world, what would be your solution to ending homelessness? Ooh, that's a that's a hard question. I think it's tied into many things. Mm -hmm. I think there are parts of it that would be tied back to uh, my agenda of mental health, but also um, financial literacy, and also accessible, accessible, affordable housing. I think there are several things that overlap and contribute to each other. Um, that there's probably not one solution, yeah. um, but for sustainability and if that if it were possible. Um, affordable housing that exists. Awesome answer. I, yeah, I, I personally believe we all should have an opportunity. We, we all should be under a roof and have an opportunity yeah. to, to have our, our homes. And, and, and we're in a society, this is 2022. There shouldn't be homelessness. Individuals, even if individuals choose to not be in a particular spot or place, they should have an opportunity to be where, where they want to be and have a roof over their head. Yeah. And we as a society, I just believe we're, we're nothing without being there for each other. Yeah. And, and, and we stand on the shoulders of many, many, many women and men. Yeah. And so we can't look down on those that are less fortunate. We have to look at those individuals are, as those that we want to be able to bring and help up. Absolutely. It's just wonderful being able to speak with you here uh, today on Chapman Radio, Dr. Vin Vendemia. And I don't know why I always mess it up. I apologize. I can apologize over and over and over. But it's been Vendi Vendemia, Dr. Vendemia. We just say Dr. V. That's why we say Dr. That, v. I was about to say. That's why. That's why we say Dr. V. Yep. And, and DJ Curly, it's always awesome to have you here at, at Chapman Radio. This is, I mean, this is your, this is your baby right here. Another exciting episode of the Compod. Another exciting yes. episode of the Compod. I don't want to end. I don't want to say goodbye. <laughs> it's so hard to say goodbye. <laughs> To yesterday. So this is and the first that, first episode that you've sung on. Let's hey, look here, I feel good. Keep that going. I feel good. <laughs> it's been wonderful, Dr. Vendemia, Dr. V. You have a great day, and, 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 and thank you for sharing and just being so open with us and, and transparent, and we just enjoy you and thank you, and we wish you nothing but the, the best, and, you know, best of luck with everything, best of wishes and everything you're doing. And DJ Curly, thank you all also. Thank you also. Please, uh, you all, please, I want you all to, to recognize that uh, this has been a, a, a wonderful segment. And, and I kind of cut off to a little bad, little bad uh, uh, intro and all that. But, hey, we, we overcame that. And uh, this, this is where we have to conclude it. But uh, with that, I want to say it has been my pleasure to be able to interview you here, Dr. V. And, and you are always welcome to come back at any time. So please come back and join us. Will do. Thank you. So please out there, everyone, please make sure you follow us on Spotify and Instagram as and at the Com Pod. Also follow me at JC Gardner Speaks on all your social media outlets. You can listen to me at Chopping It Up with Jimmy C on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and YouTube. Also coming up will be another podcast. We'll be bringing that to you guys early later on. But hey, this is DJ Jimmy C, the Exoneree. I'm signing off with the Compod. Peace.